All right, this is Paul C. We've seen several games from Paul C. before. This is another one against Tim W. All right, knight to f3, knight to c6. Um, bishop to b5, another Spanish game. And pawn to a6, bishop to a4, pawn to b5, bishop to b3. All right. And Tim played the knight to a5. And the problem with this move is it, 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 if you're saying, oh, he's giving up this pawn, not really, because if white takes the pawn, um, if white takes the pawn with knight takes, and then knight takes bishop and pawn takes knight, queen g5, black will recover his pawn. Black will recover his pawn. So the problem with the move is not that he's leaving this pawn undefended. Uh, the problem with this move is that after king said castle the problem is with this move is that he's now moved this knight one time two times three times to capture this bishop and that helps white to, to develop and you should be careful about making trades that develop your opponent's pieces and the neat thing about this development is the queen rook is developed without having even moved. Bada bing, bada boom. D6, D4, and bishop to G4. And this again is a, it does develop the bishop but rather injudiciously because by moving here, black is forced to trade off, spending two moves to do it. How do you do that? Does, do, do you guys know the technique? Well, you start with, mm, no. Now that pawn to h2 to h3 does not force the bishop to trade. The way to force the bishop to trade is to take the pawn on e5. And the problem with the trade is he's just spent two moves to accomplish this trade, but white is recapturing with development. He's advancing his queen in the process of recapturing. The reason the bishop is forced to trade is because if he takes the pawn, then queen takes queen check, and after rook takes queen, knight takes the pawn, and white gains a pawn with a tempo. Exactly uh, Hitachi hex. Egg exactly. All right, so bishop takes the knight, queen takes the bishop, and this is a general truth about tr trades as well, is try to avoid making trades that improve your opponent's position. Two such trades have, have already occurred in this game. This trade opened the door for the white bishop. And this trade develops the queen. What if he doesn't take right away? What if who doesn't take right away? What if he doesn't take this? We showed that line. What else is there to do? If he doesn't take right away, he's going to lose a pawn. Let's say he goes here. Take, take, and there goes your pawn. 
Or probably take with the rook so you can still castle at least. But still, you're losing a pawn. All right. So, queen takes, pawn takes. And all of a sudden, rook to d1, putting the rook on the open file, attacking the queen. Meanwhile, every single one of black's pieces is on its starting square. Black only has three pawns in the field of play to show for his first 10 moves. Yeah, I made 10 moves and got three pawns out into the game. Meanwhile, White's king is safely tucked away behind his pawn shield, and all three of his major pieces are in a developed posture. Queen f6 is played. And uh, not the best move here. The best way to make the queen safe from this attack and to try to catch up on the development race is to bring this bishop to d6. It brings the bishop out of bed, blocks the rook, and keeps fighting. Chopendiums is f following. Thank you, Chopendiums. Okay, so Queen of F6. Queen to D3. This threatens Queen to D7 checkmate. That's right, Hitachi Hex. Black defended with queen to c6. If he plays bishop to d6 now, rook takes pawn, and on rook takes rook, queen takes pawn, creating a fork, winning two pawns, and a rook for a rook. Chopin Diams wants to know about queen to g4. Instead of queen to d3. Threatening this way. I suppose you would have to play queen to e6 here. The point of queen to d6, however, is that it's a double attack. It threatens mate both on D8 and on D7. In other words, he's overworking both of Black's major pieces. This rook is overworked, and this queen is overworked. Which makes this next move a double exclam. Bam! What a move! What a beautiful move this was. Rook takes a6. This is a beautiful move. It, it moves into the attack of both majors, but neither major can take because both majors are overworked. Neither major can take this piece. Uh, White actually um, made, made a killer move here. So if you play queen to d6, right, you can play queen to d6 here to prevent 
this, but then you're just getting, you know what? I'm actually going to give you check. <laughs> actually going to give you check here. But the point is you can't take with the rook because that gives checkmate here. And you cannot take with the queen because that allows checkmate here. Both both are overworked. If you play here, I'll give you check here and get another attacker in on the game. And meanwhile... There's a, there are all kinds of attacks going on here. So, Paul played Rook takes Pawn. Pim a bit shocked, realized that it was made on the next turn if he took with either piece and, and resigned. What a powerful move. Now, do you notice anything about this army over here? They're all in their beds. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, but but coach, White has his most of his queen side in bed too. Yeah, but it was because of the initiative that Black allowed that Paul could set aside the principles and go after the initiative and attack. That is something I'm going to reiterate over and over and over again. That when your opponent allows you to have a development advantage, seek an initiative advantage by opening lines of attack. And if he allows you to have an initiative in that regard, you can set aside other principles because the principle of initiative um, pre uh, precludes or supersedes the principle of development. I can now defer the development of the remainder of my army on the grounds that he doesn't have anybody in the game. I don't need to bring these guys into the game because he hasn't brought his guys into the game. In fact, this is a pretty critical lesson. Because if you don't recognize when you have the initiative and you stubbornly adhere to these principles, this is an ironic lesson. Because on the one hand, I'm saying develop, develop, develop. But on the other hand, I'm saying don't develop if your opponent didn't develop because it gives you the initiative. The point is, if White takes the time to develop, that might give his opponent time to develop and catch up. So the old expression, strike when the iron is hot, is certainly a pro here. By giving up so much initiative, by wasting so much time to just trade pieces. L look at it again. Three moves to trade pieces. Two moves to trade pieces. Both of those trades facilitated development by White and gave up his only pieces that were developed. Avoid trades that help your opponent develop. And once you have the initiative, you can sit you can let these guys rest because yeah he immediately attacked the checkmate threat immediately made a new one man this was beautiful such a beautiful move 